two, one. Go ahead. Hi, so um, hi everyone. I'm Melissa Wallace and I hope you can see my screen. No, I just- Yes. Pressed. Okay, great. Um, and so- I'm Oh, no, sorry. No, right. no, nope. you need to share. Yep. Oops. Now you're good, thank you. Okay. So um, I'm a web designer and developer here at Cornell and it's been a long time since I've been on one of these calls. I'm one of those people who um, the schedule just doesn't really work for me. So, and I'm actually going to miss the second half when you might talk about that. So I'll, I'll look out on the, um, the listserv for notification about this, the timing for this. But um, so I've been working on Spotlight here at Cornell for, for, I think since we started, it was maybe early 2017. And um, so this, my demo isn't really so much a demo because um, our site hasn't changed too much. And we sort of had a lot of fits and starts with getting Spotlight implemented here at Cornell and, and used widespread. So it's, it's a little more of a state of our Spotlight service, I think. Um, and on the call also is Lynette Rail, who's a programmer who, here at Cornell who recently joined um, to help us out with some of the infrastructure and backend and uh, software issues with Spotlight for us. So um, we, let's see, I, just to give some background, we were really interested in Spotlight um, several years ago because here at Cornell we have, we have maybe 12 to 15, I think, uh, separate libraries within our system. Um, with each, within each library, um, some of them have exhibition programs, so they'll be putting on physical exhibits and gallery space, and, and then usually doing some sort of an online um, counterpart to that physical exhibit. And we're quite distributed here. So um, we have several uh, designers, developers in different unit libraries. They don't all work on the same systems. They don't all work with the same software. So um, over the years we had, and this is probably familiar for some people, but we've had our, our online exhibits built in some custom HTML, CSS, JavaScript framework. Um, everybody's sort of using different code, different look and feel. Um, all these sites are on different servers. There's no single way to get to all of these exhibits. So when um, Spotlight came out, we were re really interested in sort of piloting it and seeing if it would fit the needs for all these different exhibit makers. Um, so let's see, when we first started, it was probably early 2017 and we launched with maybe one or two exhibits. And um, since then, we, you know, we had a lot of effort kind of in the beginning we had a little bit of staff turnover in the last year or so, so there's been a little bit of a lag um, in, in our development efforts, but I think with Lynette now um, helping us out, we're, gonna, we're hopefully going to be getting sort of caught up in, in our Spotlight instance. Um, and I, just to show you, just to have something to look at, so this is um, our current installation of Spotlight right now, and we've got uh, nine exhibits that are live. I think there may be another five or six that are, that are in development. Um, and then just to kind of show you the landscape of, of our exhibits here at the library, um, our rare manuscript collections are sort of our most prolific exhibit builders. Um, they do a lot of physical exhibits and they almost always, as far as I know, do a virtual exhibit to, to go with it. And they've been doing online exhibits for a really long time. So this was an exhibit from 2000. So you can see like the, the vintage HTML look and feel of some of these old exhibits. Um, whoops, just got the toolbar in there. Uh, these are some of the more, more recent exhibits, 2016. Um, and they, they're using just a homegrown JavaScript heavy um, templating system and it works really well for their workflow. They have certain expectations about what they want their exhibits to look like. They have really tight turnarounds with getting um, imagery for the physical exhibit and then for the um, digitization for the online exhibit. So it just works for this designer to, he can work with it a lot more quickly than he can right now with Spotlight. Um, and then we had other libraries that were just creating multiple pages in a Drupal website for their exhibit. And then just a few other 
you know, older style. This one, I think, was from two, 2002 exhibits. So we have this, you know, all of these old sites, legacy sites all over the place. And our hope was that we would get um, more and more of these exhibit builders into, into spotlight and into a single place where um, our users would be able to find exhibits that they didn't know exist and, and be able to explore them. Um, so just to show you a couple of exhibits, we, ha we haven't done a whole lot of customization to Spotlight. Um, so it should look pretty familiar to everybody. But uh, this is one that um, I think it was launched last year and it was to accompany uh, an exhibit at our um, Costume Institute. And uh, the, you know, it's pretty straightforward, I think, as far as, as you know, the usual Spotlight widgets and this exhibit pretty much follows the framework for all of the ones that our exhibit builders are creating right now. So doing the feature pages, um, pretty standard use of widgets. I think they're pretty big on using video as well. So, they, so for several of their exhibits, we've been using, I think it's the iframe widget to um, share video. For this particular exhibit, they were also in the midst of digitizing um, their collection. So they have some pretty nice photographs of garments from their collection. Um, most of our exhibits are pointing to the, I don't know the term for it, but the item page with, with the additional metadata and the viewer. Yeah, I might jump in here real quick too and add something. So this is one of the things that was requested on the roadmap was the ability on pages like this to be able to have multiple images for a single item so they can show uh, front, back, and the sides of a particular item. So that's a customization that we are hoping to do at some point in the future, if not part of the, the roadmap work itself. Um, yeah. So, um, and then most of our exhibits are, are using sort of the about pages as well. So that's, that's generally the framework from, for all of our exhibits that we've seen. Um, but I think in my time working on Spotlight so far, what's been interesting to me is to see sort of the, um, the level of support that our exhibit builder users have needed. So right now we've got, um, we've got maybe two to three active users of Spotlight um, throughout the library system here. And they kind of run the gamut as far as of their support needs. So we have one user who his title, I think, might be exhibit, exhibition coordinator. So his job is making these exhibits, both, both physical and virtual. And for him, we, you know, we sat down with him, we showed him Spotlight, we showed him the dashboard, gave him an account and he just took off. He went with it and uploaded all his own image, images, had very few questions. Um, if he did contact us, it was, it was usually a small bug report or something. And we pretty much never heard from him. He would create exhibits, publish them on, on his own. And, and I come, when I come to the homepage, I say like, oh wow, this is new. And I didn't even know he was working on it. Um, and then, so, you know, at the other side we have uh, our, costume collection who often hires um, uh, graduate students. They have graduate student workers who'll be creating the exhibits. So for them, you know, they're here one to two semesters might be their availability for actually working on these exhibits. And um, the learning curve is some we found is a little bit higher. So in some cases I'll hear from um, these students really often like, you know, multiple emails during the week with sometimes really simple questions, what to me are simple questions, like how do I add a link to the, to the main menu? Or how do I enable facets on the homepage? Or how do I remove the sidebar? To um, uh, multiple bug reports and things that might actually, that were actually prohibiting them from, from completing exhibits and moving forward in their work. So, um, you know, that's just been something that we've had to consider as well, you know, as we, as we get more people to use Spotlight, how much support are we going to have to give them and how much can we give them? Because we, we know we have somewhat limited resources um, on Spotlight right now. Um, so let's see. So as far as kind of our current state of Spotlight, like as I said, we have maybe two to three active exhibit builders um, within these groups. 
we've also, since we brought Lynette on, we've been, we're quite behind. We've been behind on what version of Spotlight we're running. And we, it was a little frustrating. We were running into a, a number of bugs. Um, so their users were, you know, unable to do really basic things, like in some cases use certain widgets. Um, so we weren't sure if, if these bugs are addressed in newer versions. So now we have Lynette to sort of help us shore up our infrastructure. And I don't know, Lynette, if you have anything to add about what that's been like for you. So I, I would just make a couple of observations from our process. Um, we are in, in the process of moving our exhibits um, from a local server at Cornell to AWS. And we went with Elastic Beanstalk because we have several other um, applications that are in Elastic Beanstalk. Um, if you haven't used Elastic Beanstalk, I would tell you, I would just give you a heads up that the process of getting it set up, it can be frustratingly challenging. Um, once you have it set up, it seems to run quite well, but the, just getting everything up and running part can, can be complex. Um, and for us, we had, once we got it all up and going on AWS, and then we ran into some challenges with our data, that there, um, some of the data integrity is just uh, not quite good. And most of that fell into what I believe was caused by images that were partially uploaded and failed to complete. And so the, uh, we were able to move everything over except the final step of doing the re-indexing. And so if you had an image that didn't make it all the way through, there was some data left in the database that uh, caused the re-indexing process to fail. And so we've cleaned up most of that, um, but we also had one exhibit that, and I'm sure it was one of the first ones we created, and it was copied a couple of times. And so we actually have three versions of it in the, in the system, and there are references between the three versions. So you can, aren't able to re-index that either because it won't re-index something that's actually related to a separate exhibit. And so I'm still working on the cleanup of that particular one because I have to do it by hand. Um, once that happens though, we will be up and running on AWS and uh, from everything I've read, and anyone here can correct me if my, I'm being a little over optimistic here, but it looks like the actual um, upgrade path to getting to the latest release should not be too bad. So that will be our next challenge after I get this last data integrity issue worked out. Great, thanks Lynette. So um, I guess moving forward, you know, for the time being, we're, we're still um, hoping to get more users in and creating exhibits and spotlight, um, especially our, our sort of our big fish, which would be our rare and manuscript collections. Um, and part of that for them uh, is that they're looking for certain things like Lynette uh, mentioned before, like having compound objects in more than one image view in a record. Um, so there are certain things that they're sort of holding out for, but um, I was happy to see that roadmap recently and, and we were you know, glad that we can put some things on that list to address some of their concerns. Um, but I think that's mostly it for us. I hope I left enough time for questions, if there are any. Thank you, Melissa and Lynette. That's really great. Um, are there any questions? Nice job, Melissa. Also, Lynette, nice job of working on it from the system side. We see you posting in the Slack channel. Thank you very much. You've been doing some nice work there. Um, on the compound object side, uh, have you looked at Triple IF Manifest to do that yet? No, we have not. Um, okay. Um, I, I think um, going back to talking with Stu and possibly the folks at the University of Victoria, we've been looking at uh, Triple IF Manifest, and, and I would be happy at some point to show you how we're doing, for instance, postcards front and back uh, in a single view with a, with a manifest. And uh, with the Triple IF ingest for the new release of Spotlight, that's really pretty easy. 
That's great. When I get it updated, I'll, I'll definitely be reaching out to see how you went about doing that. Perfect. Perfect. Happy to help. Thanks. Yeah. I, Mike, I think that's a great, um, that's a great comment because um, um, I see um, Lynette that you, that you folks are using the, the default open C dragon viewer. Um, and I know what we're doing at Stanford and everybody does this a little bit differently. Um, Mike and I have talked about actually having a survey um, to, to ask different people how they're, <laughs> what they're, what they're using to pull their images in. Um, but for instance, at Stanford, um, we, we are using um, our homegrown viewer, which is um, based upon universal viewer. To pull, to pull in our images from the Stanford Digital Repository. So if, if um, we have an image object that has 10 images, um, you can scroll through those in the viewer because we're not using the, um, the default Open Sea Dragon viewer. Um, but I think that, but IIIF will accomplish that same thing. Are either of these processes documented anywhere? Um, in our GitHub repo for exhibits, um, I, um, I'm not sure how well documented it is. Let me, let me reach out to the development team who I'm actually working with now on a, on a, on a uh, non-spotlight, well, mostly non-spotlight uh, work cycle. Um, and uh, let me ask and I will definitely get back to you, Lynette. Thank and you. We are still working on documentation here for that. For that process, Lynette, I'm happy. I will be happy to send you a sample manifest that we use, and then point you at where it's integrated into our Spotlight exhibit, so you can see how it operates. Yeah, that would be great. I, I would think it would be useful in general for the community to have like a page that says these are some of your options for doing things like this. We could not agree more. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a real oppor opportunity for um, some additional members of the community um, to step up and contribute in that way. And, and I know that resourcing this is hard for everybody, but um, we, really, we really appreciate you participating with the developer's perspective, Lynette. It makes a, makes a big difference. Any other questions before, we, before I stop this recording? Nope. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop.